Hello, I'm Robert D. Bassett Jr. I'm a filmmaker, an editor, and a music producer, and I'm known all over the world as MC Class. It's like that, a chariot. I grab on the microphone, I let them marry it. We've been together for a long, long time. Check out the MC when he wanna rhyme. Yo, you gotta check this out. I talk this out. I freak this out. I gotta give you something to think about. Yeah. Class, the microphone is. 36436 is brought to you by The Late Night Experiment with Motown Maurice. Subscribe today on YouTube. Yeah, when I was growing up, I had a bad lisping problem. I used to talk like this. <laughs> and people used to make fun of me all the time. You know, so my mom took me to the doctor one day. And, you know, it was a regular physical. And um, I asked the doctor, I said, is, not good. is this going to cause me a problem later? And she said, no, you could do anything. You'll be, you can work anywhere you want, but you'll never be an MC." Never be an MC. It played in my head, never be an MC. And all I wanted to be is a radio announcer. So back then I used to practice all the time and my, me and my sister fight all the time. I was like, 107 WVLS. She said, shut up and throw something at me and diss me. And I, I dissed her cause she tried to sing. So then I kept working at it, never be an MC. And I'm like, 107.5 WVLS. And then you'll never be in it. It played in the back of my head. I was eight years old. I worked on it for years. And I got clowning 107.5 WBLS. And I kept going 107.5 WBLS. 107.5 WBLS. Here's truly class right on the microphone right here for you today. A 65 degrees, partly cloudy chance of rain to the low 50s. I practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced and then I perfected it. Same thing I did with hip hop. Just stick around and check out Strictly Hip Hop. 30 minutes of the best hip hop rap videos from around the nation. Coming up next, this station. So check it out. Yeah, I grew up in the Bronx, New York. Baychester Projects to be exact. And hip hop basically started in the Bronx. And I've seen in its infancy. Uh, the DJ used to put the, uh, bring out big ass speakers and uh, little teeny turntables and um, plug it up to someone's apartment and start a block party. That was just how it was. And everybody came out, there was no fighting. People would be dancing. They'd be just, you know, nodding their heads to the disco break beats. And then someone would get up and start rhyming, you know. And uh, it was happening everywhere simultaneously. It was happening in the Bronx. It started to move, it actually started in the South Bronx. It started moving to Manhattan, Queens. Everybody was duplicating this thing. At the same time, they were spray painting uh, the trains with graffiti. Every day you would see a brand new art piece, which they call it tagging, you know? And then at the same time, people, started break dancing because they got that from the karate movies so think about this we were going i would go to the valley park co-op city and watch the mcs and the djs and break dancers and it started like really in the 70s and went all the way up and i was just man i was mesmerized by it i wanted to do it I was like, you know, I had this, the lisping problem. I wanted to be an MC. I was like, I don't know what it, they didn't even have a name for it, but I wanted to be that. And they had these little flyers that had, you know, uh, disco fever and all that, man. Everything was just, it was just nice. Nobody was thinking about money. It wasn't about money. It wasn't about no power. It was just about the love of the art. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the proper way to hold the mic. You got to hold it, but don't hold it too tight. And first of all, you got to have your self style. And on the microphone, I prove I'm versatile. You can't rap like you a little child. You better come up with a brand new style. Yeah, at 16, I was homeless. What happened is my mom had a nervous breakdown and 
went to the store and never came back. At the time, I had um, bronchitis. I didn't know what to do. I called my aunt, jumped on the train, and um, I asked God, I said, God, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm with you 100%. I'm just going to take your lead, but I don't, I have no clue where this is going to go, but I'm going to trust you. Took the train, got to my aunt's house, and I could not sleep, and there was a tape there with Earl Clue, Al Jarreau, and a Love Bug Starsky. And I put that tape on, and Love Bug Starsky came on and was like, you gotta believe, don't let nobody say you can't make it. And I played that tape over and over and over, and it literally saved my life. And, that, and I was dedicated to hip hop from that point on. I mean, really. Because before I was learning, but, but then my heart was completely in it. Look at my city. I don't understand it. What's happening with this entire planet? We don't talk to each other no more. We don't even know who we are anymore. After high school, I got a job working at Sims. And Sims, I learned how to dress. Um, by this guy named Mike taught me how to wear my, you know, fancy clothes, know how to pick your cotton and all that. Then I left, um, I, I ended up getting laid off. They didn't want to keep me because they didn't want me in the union. So anyway, I was like, well, what am I going to do? And uh, my only alternative then was to join in the Navy. So when I got in the Navy in boot camp, I was, I was doing the cadence because they asked me to do the cases and everybody was rocking. And uh, that's when I was called the MC, you know, and uh, they was like, your cadence sucks. And then they put somebody else there. And then when they left, they was like, yo, yo, pass it. Why don't you get on the mic again? So I did that. And then I transferred to um, Bremerton, Washington, where I became uh, a radio man. And from there, I was emceeing and battling people and you know, people, uh, this guy named Roy Altman, Altman told me, yo, man, you could make some money with this. So he got me on stage. I got, um, I got paid for rapping for, I got paid $200 for rapping for 15 minutes. And then he, uh, we was like, we went out to eat and we met these two girls and, you know, I started rapping to one. I was opening the door for her and treated her like a lady, asked her, is there anything you would like? And she said, no, I'm fine. And her friend recognized that I was treating her like a lady and he was jumping in front of her. And she said, I like the way he treats her. He's got class. And then my boy said, he's an MC too. And he punched me on my arm. And that name stuck with me for 30 something years. That's how I got the name MC Class. After the Navy, I joined, um, I moved to Seattle. And in Seattle, I was making a name for myself. First, I was working as a copy technician, and I met a guy named Mellow Touch. And from there, we started, um, he was talking about putting something together. But anyway, I met this guy named Danny D. Rock, who introduced me to DJ Swift, which is now Swift 32nd, and B Max, which back then was Nerdy B. And you know, we formed a group called Brother. Well, at the time, we formed a group called The Last Poets, and uh, that name was already taken. But we submit. I submitted a tape to uh, the source, and we got a write-up uh, in unsigned height. And then from there, we got a manager, and we was listening to Public Enemy one day. You know, because we the, the the last post was not gonna work. <laughs> it was already taken. But we was listening to Public Enemy one day, and he said, we're brothers of the same mind, unblind. And I was like, ah, that's it. So we named the group Brothers of the Same Mind. We were in the source about two or three times. And then we ended up performing with Run DMC, Ice Cube, SWV, Scarface, and we were headlining. And then uh, the group disbanded over uh, contract negotiations. And I ended up going to school. I went through severe depression. And um, one of my friends was like, you need to go fishing. And then the other dude was like, yeah, you got your reel out there. And then I wrote the song Fishing, which moved me into the acid jazz movement. 
at, as a solo artist where I played with SWV, Jean A, and various other artists that were are well known now. Roddy, when the music plays, I like to keep it going on in a smooth state. I like to say what's up to Dr. Roger, Rick and Dallas. A2 or down with the brothers click. I currently am in a group called Damage Control. Really, Damage Control really is um, is a component. It's like a, a nucleus where I could put anybody I want into it. And me and uh, Black Joe, we're like the nucleus of this group. And I decided to expand and move into different areas. And we met a guy named TC the Third. And when I went to New York and I loved his voice, I was sitting on his project for at least five or 10 years. And then I was like, you know what? I'm looking for a particular voice. And when I heard it, I said, that's the voice I want. And I approached him, didn't tell him nothing. I just said, you need to come to LA, you know, to come visit. <laughs> That's the, you know, I recorded him. And you know, and we, we, Damage Control, basically he is a featured artist on Damage Control. But Damage Control is about the upliftment of hip hop, because hip hop needs Damage Control. And I got the blessings from Rakim, because Rakim says to me, yeah, we need a Damage Control. It was at a show he did with um, Medusa. And I was like, all right. So we, I dropped the album, the Soul Repair Kit. It's everywhere. It's on the internet. I'm about to do it on vinyl. And then there's going to be different segments of it, which will include opera, um, classical, jazz, everything fused in with hip hop. I'm gonna experiment because as an independent label and artist, I don't need to check with anybody if my idea works or not. It's me. And I think all artists should be independent so they could do whatever they want to do and put it out the way they want to put it out. Put I would sit back, reminiscing. I used to miss my girls kissing. I called her Jupiter. She had a style not up to sir. I felt it was like heaven on earth. The name of my company is Delanor Baychester Productions. And my goal is to put out positive music and positive films, as well as teach kids how to do the same thing to duplicate what I'm doing. And, and give them uh, another resource through, you know, we, we, have, we all go through depression and I'm talking about suicide, I'm talking about all the things that people don't talk about and giving you a solution and encouragement because that's the thing, people are hurting right now and they really need encouragement. So my website is hip hops with a S, damagecontrol.com. Hip Hop's Damage Control. We came here to repair your soul. I was in a late night experiment with Motown Maurice. I was in his season four show. I played his attorney. And I'm gonna tell you, boy, that was, woof, that was a challenge. Um, at the time, he gave me a monologue the week before or the week of. <laughs> <laughs> and expected me to master it. Well, anyway, I was so nervous, but it worked for the scene. And uh, he did such a great job editing it. And I had such a good time there. I learned a lot. You really need to get your lines down. You really need to take it seriously. And I learned a lot and I had, I, I would do it again. Motown Maurice. Now that's the man. Motown Maurice has a right to carve his way into late night television with or without the law of attraction. He doesn't have to like Seth Meyers. Hey, I can't stand Seth Meyers. I think he sucks. You need to check out Motown Maurice late night experiment. It's just like hip hop for, for comedians. <laughs> you gotta check him out. He is the next late night host so i'm gonna tell you you gotta check them out something else make you smile every minute 
In the landscape of late night there's Motel Maurice Fighting to claim his hosting destiny He needs your help, please spread the word Subscribe and you will see Subscribe and you will see